I am here to talk on taxation of digital economy today. Where are we right now? There's a lot of stuff happening in this space right now, wherein you know, lots of developments from the taxation point of view are happening. Where are we actually standing on June 17, 2021, when it comes to taxation of digital economy? So I'll cover the same topic in two sections. One is the domestic law, which is from the Indian side. Second, the interrelation between what is happening on the international front and the interplay with the Indian framework. We all know business models have been changing drastically. Gone are those days when you have to physically present somewhere to do business, to you know derive income out of that territory. You just have to, you know, not be physically present now anymore in that territory to get some income out of it. Everything is happening on the cloud. Everything is happening through the online digital networks and so on and so forth. India has introduced unilateral majors already in the form of equalization levi. Whether at the rate of 2% or whether at the rate of 6%, it aims at taxing e-commerce supply of goods or services. It aims at taxing online businesses, online transactions, somewhere or the other. Also, India has introduced significant economic presence, SEP concept, in its Section 9 of the Domestic Indian Income Tax Act 1961, which talks about incomes deemed to accrue or arise in India. On the international front, we all know OECD has already came up with the BEPS, Base Erosion Profit Shifting Action Plans. One of the action plan, action plan one itself is of digital economy. OECD has also introduced the concepts of pillar one and pillar two. Pillar one talks about the nexus, new nexus, which gets created. It talks about how profits are going to be allocated along the market jurisdictions. By market jurisdictions, I mean all the countries wherein the marketing activities are happening, all the countries wherein the sales are happening on the basis of 20 over 10% approach. It talks about, I'll talk about 20 over 10% approach later on. It also talks about the importance of residual income. Pillar 2 talks about globe minimum taxation. Recently, G7 countries, one of the powerful economies of the world, USA, UK, France, Canada, Germany, Italy, have arrived on a consensus of a global minimum tax rate of 15%, wherein 15% tax would apply to each MNC in each country wherein they operate, not just where they're headquartered. It has raised several questions on the countries like Ireland, on the countries which have lower tax rate than 15% already. For example, UAE, which has given specific 100% exemptions to various corporates out there. UN Tax Committee, on the other hand, has come up with a proposal to, to introduce a new Article 12b, which talks about automated digital services, ADS. That is, services which involve minimal human intervention there. A non-resident is not supposed to have a PE in ADS Article 12b, no thresholds, unlike Article 5. So, MLI is another development which is there to modify the tax treaties. Again, after that, there's a lot of it which is happening. I'll just say on the, you know, all in all, we have Indian Income Tax Act. We have tax treaties. We have then MLI. We have then BEPS. We have then OECD Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 reports. And then we have G7 minimum tax proposal. In the month of July, which is next month, G20 inclusive framework meeting is going to take place, wherein 
lot many countries are going to participate wherein this G7 proposal of 15% is also going to be you know uh, taken forward there India is not expected to wait to be a deal breaker India is expected to facilitate because you know there are already powerful economies involved OECD is involved so there are no chances that i see that india can go against it however there will be concerns from the india side when we talk of how are we going to allocate profits to indian side so now i'll cover 20 over 10% approach for example there is a group revenue of around 1000 crores inr 10% of it belongs to india that is 100 crores ayana there is an overall profit before tax margin on sales let's say group margin is 40% so i'll so what i'll do is i'll segregate 30% into non routine and routine what i'll do is 20 over 10% approach you keep 10% profit that is i'll keep 10% out of that 40% remaining 30% is the non routine or is the residual income prof residual income percentage what i'll do now is india contributes to 10% of the global revenue i'll allocate this 30% in the proportion of the 10% to india india will tax according to the domestic tax rates on the attributable part of out of that non routine income i know it's quite complicated but this is how it is let's see what all happens next month there's a lot of it which is expected to you know um, to be moved in the international tax space especially taxation of digital economy this is where we are standing right now when i talk of taxation of digital economy thank you so very much